morning everybody this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College it's uh, March the 28th and we're looking at Judges and chapter 9 now <clears throat> if I asked you who's the first king of Israel then most Christians would say well Saul was the first king of Israel the problem is that the Bible always surprises us and interestingly enough in this passage in Judges chapter 9 we discover that Saul was not the first king of Israel now, the first king of Israel was Abimelech who was the uh, who was um, the son of Gideon he took the throne he took it for three years and he died a terrible death but we're going to talk about um, his life so Abimelech was the son of Jerubbabel who went to Sechem and to his mother's brethren so he went to his uncles um, and he talked to them and all the family of the house of his father's his mother's father saying speak uh, to the ears of all the men of Sechem he says which is it better for you that um, that you are all just brothers together 70 of you um, and isn't it better that one man reigns over you um, and so why don't you let me be your king that's what he's saying and they gave him 70 pieces of silver and they sent him to um, to ba Baal Bareth. Now, when he arrived at Baal Bareth, he hired vain and light persons. That's a lovely expression. You see, what he did, he used the money to gather friends to him. And anybody in politics today needs to be very wary of this. When you gather people by money then they are vain and light persons and he went to his father's house at Ophrah and he slew all his brethren he slew his brothers the the sons of Jerubbabel 70 of them he killed upon one stone however Jotham managed to get away and <clears throat> When Jotham heard that all his brothers had been killed by Abimelech, he went to uh, the top of Mount Gerizim and he s spoke with a loud voice to the people. He says, listen to me, you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees went forth on the time to anoint a king over them and they said to the olive tree, reign over us. But the olive tree said, shall I leave my fatness? wherewith by me they honour God and man and go to be promoted over all the trees you see Jotham is using a parable to show um, what is happening um, and so the trees, uh, trees <coughs> the trees said to the fig tree come and reign over us and the fig tree said shall I forget my sweetness my good fruit and go to be promoted over all the trees then said the trees to the vine come and reign over us and be promoted over all the trees and um, the vine said shall I leave my wine my wine which cheers God and men and go to be promoted over all the trees it's very interesting that in this parable we have the three the three trees of Israel we have the olive the fig and the vine so then the trees then came to the bramble and they said come and reign over us and the bramble said well if you really want me to be king over you then come and put your trust in my shadow and if not then let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon I mean I don't know whether you've ever thought about this but there's no shade under a bramble no shade at all um, and this is how this is how Jotham was able to explain to the men what Abimelech was doing he, de he describes him as the son of his maidservant Abimelech um, <clears throat> Jotham then when, when he'd spoken to all these people Jotham ran away and fled because he was afraid of Abimelech his brother now Abimelech reigned for three years over Israel and God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem these are the men that had supported him in the beginning you see not only can God allow an evil king to come into power but God is able also to disrupt the relationship between the king and his subjects those who serve him 
Um, <clears throat> now Gael, the son of Ebed, came with his brethren and went over to Sechem, and the men of Sechem put their confidence in him. And they went into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trod the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God to eat and to drink. And they cursed Abimelech. So now we've got a serious matter. Now we've got a drunken and a wayward army that's going to oppose Abimelech. <coughs> um, Zebul, Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Ebed, and his anger was kindled. And he sent messages unto Abimelech privately, saying, Behold, Gael, the son of Ebed, and his brethren are come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. So Abimelech comes out to war against them. Abimelech said unto him, um, he went to see Gael in the in the city, and he said, "Look," he said, uh, um, "He said to Gabriel, behold, they come down, the the people come down from the top of the mountains.'" But Zebul said, "Oh no, I think you see in shadows. I think you see in shadows." And Gael said, "No, no," he says, "There's people coming in the middle of the land, and another company come along the plain of Moanim." And then said Gabriel unto him, "Well, where is your mouth now?" When you said, "Who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Is not the people? Is this not the people that you despised? Why don't you go out and fight with them?" So Gael went out from the city before the men of Shechem and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled. And many were wounded and overthrown, even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt in Arima, and Zebul thrust out Gael and his brethren that they should not dwell in Shechem <clears throat> and it came to pass on the next day that the people went out in the field and they told Abimelech and he took the people, people and divided them into three companies and laid wait in the field and looked and behold the people were come forth out of the city and he rose up and smote them and Abimelech and the company with him rushed forward and stood at the entering of the gate of the city. And two other companies ran upon all the people that were in the field and slew them. <clears throat> and when all the men of Shechem heard that, they entered into a hold into the house of the god Bereth. And it was told Abimelech that all the people of Shechem were gathered there. So he went and he cut down a tree. And he said, I want everybody to do the same as what I've done. And they all went and they cut down a tree and laid it upon their shoulder. And they went to the tower of Shechem and they burnt it with fire. There was over a thousand men and women in there. Then went Abimelech to Thibes and camped against that and took it. And there was a strong tower in the city. And he came there to burn that tower as well. And just one moment, going to sneeze. And as they were coming to the tower, he was trying to. <coughs> Bimelech was trying to find the door of the tower. And just as he came near to the tower, so a woman cast part of a millstone over the castle wall. And it fell down upon Abimelech and broke his skull. And he, as he lay there, he said to the young man that carried his armour, he said to him, Draw your sword quickly and kill me. Don't let it ever be said that a woman has killed me. And so the young man thrust him through and he died. And when the children of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man to their own homes. And so God had rendered the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did unto his father in slaying all his brothers, his seventy brothers. And Jotham, the curse of Jotham had been fulfilled. Now after Abimelech there arose to defend Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar. And he judged Israel for 23 years and he died and was buried in Shamir. Now, we don't know anything else about his life. How interesting. This, this is a man who was a judge of Israel who judged for 23 years. And yet we know nothing about him except what is said in these two verses. So there's a lot of interesting research when we get to glory to find out all about these guys. And it came to pass after Jair the, Gide the Gileadite judged Israel 22 years 
and he had 30 sons that rode on 30 ash colts and they had 30 cities and that's easy to remember then isn't it so Jair had uh, 30 sons who rode on 30 asses and they had 30 cities <clears throat> and then it says that Jair died and was buried in Gamon. So again, we have another person, another judge. He judges for 22 years and we know nothing about him except how many sons he had and how many cities they dwelt in. It then says in verse 6, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and they served, listen to this now, they served Balaam and Ashtaroth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Zidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Ammon, the gods of the Philistines, and they forsook the Lord and served him not. That's shocking, isn't it? This is a spiritual adultery. They had forsaken the Lord. It says the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. I'm not at all surprised. And therefore the Lord sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of of the children of Ammon dear me and that year they vexed them and oppressed the children of Israel for 18 years they oppressed them and then the Lord eventually um, <clears throat> the Lord eventually brought Israel to his knees and in verse 10 it says the children of Israel cried unto the Lord their God saying we have sinned against thee both because we have forsaken our God and we have also served Balaam. And the Lord spoke to them. He said, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the children of Ammon and the Philistines and the Zidonians also and the Amalekites and the Moanites did oppress you? And you cried unto me and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Wherefore I will deliver you no more. That's a shocking thing. Go and cry unto the gods that you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the day of your tribulation. However, right at the very end of the passage, the children of Israel said, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatever seems good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them, and they serve the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the mercy for the misery of Israel. You see, God was grieved at all the suffering that the, that they went in, and the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped at Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled them together and camped at Mizpah, and the children of Israel came together as one man, and they said, "Who's going to lead us? Who's going to lead us against the children of Ammon?" Tomorrow we will discover who it was who stepped forward in their hour of need to lead the children of Israel. <clears throat> now, I don't have a password. That's a particular phrase. I'm rather shocked at the depth of the depravity of the forsaking of Israel, of the Lord their God. I'm surprised how far Israel had stooped. So that's my thought for today and um, look forward to speaking to you all again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.